Hello, Edumagicians. Welcome to the Edumagic Podcast with your host, Dr. Sam Fesich. Dr. Sam is a professor of education, author of Edumagic, and a pumpkin spice latte fan. This podcast is designed for pre-service teachers. Remember, friends, teaching doesn't begin at graduation, but during that first class at 8 a.m. Let's get this party started. Hi, I'm Gabriel Carrillo from the EdTech Bytes podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Hello, Edu Magicians, and welcome back to another episode of the Edu Magic Podcast. My name is Dr. Sam Festus, and today I have with me Eileen Winokur, and she's going to be sharing about one of my favorite topics professional learning communities and the importance of being a connected educator. She calls it professional belonging. And oh my gosh, I love that word. When I read that, I felt I felt like I saw it in like neon lights. It was so, yes, I am with you on that one, Eileen. Before we jump into our topic today, would you be able to share a little bit about your teaching story that brought you into education and what your current role is? Absolutely. And thank you so much, Sam, for asking me to be on. I'm really excited to share about this topic with your Yay. listeners. Yeah. So my teaching story is sort of an, a by accident story. Although when I was younger, like growing up, p- people said, oh, Eileen, you're so patient and you like to play school. You should be a teacher. And I said, no, I can't be a teacher. Teachers need to be perfect because all those students are, they're responsible for them. If they don't do well, then it's their responsibility. So I did other things. I studied history and then I took an mm-hmm. MBA and then right after, right before I went for my MBA, I met my husband who was from Kuwait. I grew up in Buffalo, New York, and I ended up moving over to Kuwait in 1984. And for the first period of time, I had three children and I didn't work. And when it was time to go back to work, I decided, even though I had an MBA, I did not want to do banking because I would have to work mornings and evenings and I wanted to be with my little kids. And Mm -hmm. so I started working a a job and then a friend of mine called and said, Eileen, there's a new school opening up. It's an all girls school and it's an American curriculum. And I think she called me because she wanted to see if I wanted to put my daughter in in the school. But I thought, well, that would be interesting. How about if I teach? And so, and that was 1996 and the school was opening. And when a school opens here, it was a private school. And when it opens here, teacher qualifications, they aren't as specific. And so I was hired to be their first third grade teacher, and I, I loved it. I just fell in love with it. And of course, I knew that I had to go back and study and get a certification because I needed to know pedagogy, and mm-hmm. I love reading research for fun. So I Ooh. started reading research, and then I joined uh, the ASCD and learned all about Car- Carol Ann Tomlinson's differentiated okay. instruction. And then I said, well, it would be great if we could change our report cards to fit the instruction. And then I started looking at backward design. And anyway, so I just became really passionate. I did get my certification a couple of years after. And then I became the elementary principal. Ah. And I, I did that until my daughter graduated in 2008. So I was at the school for 12 years. I loved it and ended up even doing kindergarten because the a coordinator <laughs> left first quarter of the year and they needed someone to sort of pick up the slack. And so I ended up doing that too, which I also loved. And then I said, well, I really like, I, I just love um professional development. I love supporting teachers and I don't think they get supported enough. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I said, I'm going to freelance professional development. I finished up. Let's do it. Yep. I finished up my doctorate, which I had started in 2005 at Lehigh University. Yeah. in educational leadership. And of course, my topic was about professional development and transfer of training. But then I ended up coming back and I was offered a job at a university to be an instructor of English in intensive English. So I took Mm -hmm. that, did that two and a half years, finished up my doctorate, and then 
retired, <laughs> which was very short lived. And uh, I know this is a very long story, but it <laughs> it's all true. It's okay. Yeah. And then I ended up being asked by some of my former colleagues to come back to a very toxic atmosphere at the university that where I had worked, the department where I had worked. The director had left suddenly, and uh, they were looking for a new director to start the following year. And I said, I'm not interested. And I sent the skimpiest resume you would ever seen, like just a, a few lines of what I could do. But they knew me. <laughs> And so they hired me <laughs> and I did that for five years from 2014 until 2019. And I loved that also. We, we got recertified, uh, reaccredited, and uh, I was also in charge of the a math developmental program and we got, we had uh, that accredited. And so I felt like I had accomplished a lot. We changed the culture of the, of the department from something that was really toxic to something that was really welcoming. And uh, then I really did retire in 2019. So I could, <laughs> and, and the reason you're going to really laugh now, the reason was so I could travel more because I still live in Kuwait and my, ah. two of my children are in the United States now. And my, my mother is still alive. She's 98, but almost 98. My sister's there, my brother's there. And, um, and of course my husband and I wanted to do some traveling. He had retired a long time ago. Uh, of course, then we had COVID and we didn't travel too much, but that's okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, but I wanted to stay in in education. And so right now what I do is I support uh, refugee and displaced teachers and students around the world with different programs and mentor teachers and continue to do presentations and professional development. And so... And so I'm really, really excited about being able to share with your new teachers. Yes, and I'm excited to have you here. Eileen, what a story. <laughs> that is an amazing teaching story from having an MBA to being um, a teacher, a third grade teacher, then a principal, then a kindergarten teacher, and then a professor, and then head of the department, and then retiring and retiring again. <laughs> oh my gosh, what an amazing story. I think it really shows future teachers that a path in teaching can take you so many different ways. And in your case, so many places around the world, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, being, being a global teacher is, isn't so unusual anymore. And right. I see that you had a number of episodes about working internationally. So yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to be able to see the world from, from that point of view. Yes. Yes. Eileen, we're connecting today to chat about professional belonging. Can we define that really quick? So what exactly is professional belonging? I love this word, and I think I might start using it now. Yeah, can you give us a little definition? Awesome, awesome. Yes, I'd love if you use the word. So yeah. I, very briefly, um, my story is that I started blogging about a couple of years ago about the interest that people had when I told them the story about how I had settled in Kuwait and I felt so comfortable here. And whether I'm in the United States or whether I'm in Kuwait, I, I feel a sense of belonging. But I didn't call it that. It just felt like I was at home. And then I started, of course, I'm a research nerd. So I started doing research <laughs> and I realized that the connection was the fact that I felt the sense of belonging. And so the more I looked into it, the more I realized that there are all different types of belonging that we feel depending on what part of our life or social circumstances or relationships we're looking at. And so I've divided it up into self-belonging, which is that sense of self-concept, but all of those self-words. Personal belonging, which is the relationships we have with friends and family. And then professional belonging when we start working, which is the, the idea that we need to feel valued, we need to feel accepted, we need to feel celebrated. We need to feel comfortable. We need to feel that sense of trust. We, we need to feel when we walk in the building, wherever we are, that, um, that we're happy to be there yes. as soon as we walk in the door. So professional belonging is all of those things that make us feel like we want to stay there. Something that I think is lacking these days, huh. which is unfortunate. Ooh, yeah, you really hit it on the head there. Like being able to walk in the door and feel welcomed, valued, appreciate that's something we want all of our students to feel 
when they come into our classroom, but teachers need to feel that professional belonging as well. Oh, absolutely. And sometimes we, we, we forget that because teachers are, are the service people. We're the ones who are taking care of everybody else. But if we're not taking care of ourselves, and certainly if others aren't taking care of us, and we're not able to take care of others, it, it really sets us apart. It's, it's a very lonely feeling. Yes, it is. It is. Eileen, why is this an important thing for new teachers to know about? I can think of finding a good fit in a school or a district as a first-year teacher, being able to have that professional sense of belonging. Right. But why, what are some other reasons? Why, why is this an important feature for teachers to be looking for? Well, the importance for new teachers is that they are walking in and there are a lot of things that they already know about and already understand, but the, the practical part of it hasn't yet settled in. And so having an extended sort of professional family to be able to support you is really important in those first couple of years, certainly, it's always important, but certainly in those first couple of years, when you're trying to get used to everything and things are coming at you, you're, you're, for instance, you, you go in with a lesson, it doesn't work exactly as you thought it would, but there's nobody around you that, that you really feel comfortable with to ask, what do I do? Mm-hmm. Perhaps you have a mentor, but often we're like, we're those people that, no, we can, we can manage it. We can manage it. We don't want to bother anybody else. We know how busy everybody else is. So if you create these professional learning communities or support systems for yourself, you're able to reach out to those people and be able to find answers to things and just, just the support. Sometimes it's just, I want to talk to somebody because it's been a really tough time. I don't need any answers necessarily because I think I can get to the bottom of it myself, but I need somebody else with me in order to reflect. So I think it's really important as a new teacher. I remember when I first started and certainly I didn't have the pedagogy. I had helped my children. I, I sort of had a natural ability to know what, what seemed right, what, without research or whatever, but I really didn't know and I didn't have the pedagogy and it was really important for me. And I don't know that I really had that support, but I felt that there were a couple of people in the building who really, who really wanted to help me. And, and I leaned on them. And I think Mm -hmm. that's, what's, what's really important about having that community there. How can we, I know this might be a, a, Different question to ask, but if while we're searching for jobs, I'm thinking of our new graduates in just a month or so here, mm-hmm. how can they look for that in a school? How can they look for a professional belonging? What are some things they can be looking for to make sure that they are supported? Right. It's really important to, to advocate and speak up. So I know we tend to, when we, when we walk into a new situation, whatever job it is, it, it doesn't even have to be teaching, we tend to listen a lot. And we, we want to know what the situation is. We want to know, get a feeling for things. Uh, there's a lot to learn about the culture of the place, who everybody is. I was always a very, you probably won't believe this, but I was always a very shy person growing up. No. <laughs> And I, I found it very difficult to sort of go out. I thought, always thought to myself, gee, it's okay if I'm alone. That's fine if I'm just on my own. I'm fine on my own. But really not. You need to, to, to realize that you do need other people. And it doesn't have to be everybody in the building. It could be just one or two people that you trust. So finding people, whether it's through, obviously, you're going to have staff meetings. You're going to have a team that you're working with, a grade level team or a special team. And if you don't, if you're a specials teacher and you're the only one in the building who does that, or maybe maybe a coach, then looking for other people who are in the grade levels maybe that you teach, but really, really paying attention and being intentional about it. And I don't think I was. I, I survived in spite of it. 
Um, but it would have been much happier and much better if I had intentionally looked for people who I could rely on and who I felt could rely on me also, because it's always good to feel when you've, you've taken that you've also given. Yeah, that you can contribute back at that mm-hmm. Julie Street that right. you talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. So what are some ways we can get started in our professional belonging? And maybe you've already answered that in a few of the other questions, but are there any other strategies that you'd like to share? I would say that <laughs> our online abilities now through social media are amazing. And mm. I know that sometimes our pre-service teachers or our student teachers don't, don't necessarily have those accounts yet or not really sure where to start. I was a lurker for the mm-hmm. first several years. I learned a lot by lurking. And so uh, I would say if, if teachers aren't keen to get started and hop on, uh, they're, they're not sure what to do and who to follow, to just kind of follow a couple of accounts that they're comfortable with. I'm very active on Twitter, but I also post on other social media. And I am very also intentional about who I follow and who I allow to follow me. So, um, and it's not all educators necessarily, but the majority are educators. And it's interesting because not all of them think like me but they contribute in some way to my my professional development again a, a, oh, another way outside of your building that you're able to connect with other people collaborate with them around the globe and get involved with conversations that you're interested in with with uh, twitter chats i mean there are all kinds of ways now that you can get involved so Putting together a PLN as well as a PLC, I think, is professional learning network online as well as a professional learning community within your your school district or within your school, I think, is is really, really important. And don't feel shy about getting started and don't feel shy about just watching what other people are doing. Yeah. I call that being a learner. So continuing to learn, even if you're not posting anything, you're still learning something from that experience. Absolutely. like that learner rather than lurker. (laughs) (laughs) Also, um, having a professional social media presence can definitely help in the job search, right? Oh, absolutely. Yes. I've, I've seen that often where people have connected. I know even... From my son-in-law, who was looking for for work, he he's an international um, educator and looking for work. Leaned on many of his contacts to find out if there were job openings and so forth, and then just to see what people are posting in terms of how, how comfortable they are in their jobs, how how much they like their situations. Of course, that will be your first indication that. If they've been there for a while and they like what they're doing, that would be a good place to be. And it also gives you a little sense of that school culture and the school climate. Oh, absolutely. Yes. That's really important. And if you have the opportunity to be on site for the interview, when you walk in the door, you can tell almost right away whether that sense of belonging is there, whether that culture and climate is there or not. And it is something you can feel. Right, right. Good. You get it. Okay, good. (laughs) Yeah, something you can feel when you walk in the building, you can feel it. Yes. And yeah, I think that's really important. Eileen, this has been a fantastic conversation about professional belonging, whether it's through a PLC or a PLN. Is there any other tips you want to share with our listeners today? Well, I, I just wanted to say that Find find those critical friends. Again, it could be one or two people that you really feel a sense of confidence in and trust to give you feedback and and for you to to give feedback back. And also, I know that some teachers are kind of shy to be videoed in their classrooms, but that's one way for you to really be able to see yourself while you're teaching. And sometimes we don't, 
we don't see ourselves. And uh, I don't know if there are edu- education programs now that, that do that quite often. I know that they were doing that in Canada, but I'm not sure about the United States. But that's that's a great way. Or just have your peers observe you, not for any kind of evaluation, but just have them come in and observe a lesson that you either are having trouble with or that you're really proud of and volunteer to to go into their classroom. That's yeah. an, that's another way to really, I mean, we there's so much that we can share. It's it's really interesting. I, I know of schools who want to hire big names to come in and offer professional development, and that's wonderful. But I have found, I have learned, as a seasoned teacher, I have learned so much from new teachers and uh, teachers who have only been in doing it for a couple of years. So there's so much we can learn from each other. We need to to consider that as professional development also. Absolutely, we do. (laughs) Eileen, can you please share before we end our episode today how my listeners can get in touch with you and can learn from you and the stuff that you're posting and learning about on Twitter? Absolutely, yes. So I'm Eileen Winokur, I-L-E-N-E-W-I-N-O-K-U-R. On uh, most of the social media, you'll find me at the same thing, Eileen Winokur. Right now, I have a website called Journeys Number 2 Belonging. And I also have a podcast called Journeys to Belonging, which is available on most podcast platforms if people want to uh, listen to my guests and just just like you do your, this wonderful show, I enjoy in interviewing guests about their experiences uh, with belonging and education. And I have the, my book is out. It was published by Edumatch, and it's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. It's called Journey to Belonging without the S, which is really confusing, <laughs> but that's me. Pathways to Well-Being. And there will be, uh, hopefully at the end of the summer or early fall, a companion workbook to go with the book about belonging. Oh, beautiful. Fantastic, yeah. Eileen. Well, from one Edumatch author and podcaster to another, I am really excited to get this out to my listeners and share all the amazing resources that you have and that you've learned and that they can continue to learn from you. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much, Sam. I really appreciate your inviting me today. And there you have it, Edu Magicians. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share it with your friends. For more edu magic, check out sfesich.com and follow Dr. Sam on Twitter and Instagram at sfesich. Until next time, you have the edu magic within you.